Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's coverage here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. We are at our East Coast studio at the NYSC on the balcony, overlooking the floor. Day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. The closing bell will be coming up shortly, but we are here with Cindy Chin, who's the Planetary Systems.ai CEO, founder, and chief space officer, newly formed startup, already got traction. Cindy, great to see you. Great to meet you last night in person at the Founder uh, Banquet Awards mm -hmm. slash, it wasn't awards, but it was more like an award. It was a great it was, it was a great event. Great networking event. Mm -hmm. It was the best of the best of founders um, innovating with AI, and you're doing some amazing stuff with space. Obviously, we love space. Space and tech is to, goes together uh, really, really well. People love space. All the nerds love space. Sure. I do not love space. Mm -hmm. We need more space. We need more space. We always need more space. It's crowded in space, too. It's been, you can launch now. I mean, space, we've been covering the Cube. Uh, space Force, obviously, with AWS and others. Um, the cost and economics to get stuff into space is cheaper than ever. Uh, satellites, we've got Starlink with Elon. He's catching rockets out of midair with the, with the, with the chopsticks, as they say. Um, you know, quite the innovation wave going on. And generative AI is going to bring us more capabilities to manage all those payloads, all that stuff in space this is what you guys are focused on mm -hmm. explain explain planetary systems what you guys do the origination the idea and some of the early tractions okay. very young early stage company mm -hmm. but still sure. impressive results so far sure thanks so much john it's great to see you again um with planetary what we're doing is we are accelerating data flow so that you can have insight generation and then optimize decision support for space operations. And what does that mean is, is the, um, space data is really siloed and it's disparate. It's in a variety of different forms and formats, et cetera. If you're talking about just satellites alone, you have 11,900 satellites, active satellites in the space right now, another 24,000 about to be uh, you know, launched in, into orbit and then managed with at least the 13 data uh, type data formats with uh, optical imagery, RF, a LIDAR, et cetera, and communications data. Combine that with 80 different formats, like 13 data types, 80 different formats. It's a big mess and it's getting really busy, uh, get, getting busy. And what we're trying to do is um, help solve that problem with that. And as you know, you asked about how, how I uh, got into this is, I'm also a NASA data knot. And so in uh, 2016, NASA opened this uh, open innovation program out there. And I sit, uh, I'm an ambassador and sit as, used to sit as a judge for the International Space Apps Challenge. You're talking about 172 countries. I saw how difficult it is for people to get publicly sourced data in, in um, formats that they can use. And it's just all everywhere else. And you really need a central place where you don't have to go through permissions um, and, and just even get a half day or longer to get an API access to uh, data that you need. You know, Cindy, one of the things that's driving generative AI are two things. One is getting access to data, yeah. big democratization trend around mm -hmm. getting access to data, and also the idea of open connected ecosystems. If you look at all the successful players now in early days of this super cycle of Gen AI, open connected ecosystems are super important. Mm -hmm. So siloed or stovepipes, whatever word you want to use, doesn't work because it creates lag, one, and two, incompatible mm -hmm. systems. So they don't talk to each other. Right, and it's also a cost for the companies that are storing this silo legacy data in there, and they're not doing anything with it. So thinking about like inventory, right, when you're in supply chain, it's really such a big problem. So we're trying to optimize that uh, with what Planetary is building in our intelligence platform and then uh, be able to connect and configure the, that to make it usable. And the the openness aspect of that, that actually the word is interoperability. You'll hear all the satellite companies talking about it. You hear the Space Force talking about it, that it's a problem as well. We want to be able to make sure that we can um, pro provide artificial intelligence solutions and the machine learning tools necessary in order to get that time sensitive information out there so we can make decisions a lot faster. Well, I'm really glad you came on. Not only were you at the event last night with the the, uh, the Cube and the NYC Wired Network of the top founders, you're also here at the NYC. They have a space event yes. going on on the sixth floor. We're mm -hmm. on floor, right about floor one. Mm -hmm. um, what's the conversations like? They got some heavy hitters there. Amazing. What's the conversation? What are the core, what's the agenda there? What's the top conversation? Sure. Well, it, to close out the gate, uh, open the gate, actually, when I got there this morning, 
Chad Anderson from Space Capital was talking about exactly about this problem with data and, and trying to get ahead of it. Uh, so that's on the conversation. Then we have the folks who are building solutions um, that are for um, space exploration and, and whatnot. With the hardware side, no. and they're out there with uh, Barbara Belvisi and Interstellar, who's a friend. Uh, you know, she's building greenhouses that can be in space stations up there. And then we, um, when, we, when I left, it, you have uh, General Raymond, who fr was there when Space Force was initiated. And so he's talking about what it was like for the, for the uh, Pentagon and the Department of Defense to really open it up so that the commercial companies can come in and help with um, America's national uh, security and competitiveness in space. You know, space has been a fun area for the cube. We've covered a lot of the Space Force, a lot of going, stuff going on. Space. In the old days, there was plenty of room up there. I mean, just hard to get stuff up. Now it's economics. You can get uh, 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 satellites up fast. It, it's, it's very inexpensive, relatively speaking, the way from the old days to get stuff into space. So you have a resource challenge. And you know, it reminds me of the old computer days, uh, industry days, where resource planning and allocation, managing the stuff in space. I mean, it is technically an edge of the network. I mean, it's not on the planet, but it's outside of the planet. It's an edge case. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the edge is hot and, and uh, distributed computing. Space is a um, far edge, I guess, mm -hmm. to space. But there's resources there. You've got telemetry, you've got connectivity. Mm -hmm. And these are basically IoT, big IoT devices, almost like data centers. So, you know, there's a lot going on now. You've got congestion, contention mm -hmm. in space. You've got a lot of things happening, more and more stuff beaming down to us. And there's, it's part of our critical infrastructure. So I can see the national security angle. I'm, I mean, that's a whole separate conversation. But from a data standpoint, how are you? What are some of the core challenges? You mentioned supply chain, which I can see that being a security thing. What? That's one, probably of many. When you look at the plethora of challenges that are opportunities, how would you rank them from your perspective? Um, you know, again, it's just, it's just getting access to the data, and I'm not just talking about from a competitive standpoint. I'm just talking about even people within their own organizations. Okay don't necessarily, it, it's just so much, uh, billions of petabytes of data that a human being cannot process it singularly, right? So it's that, some of that needs to be uh, um, automated uh, in those systems. Then compared with that is, is you're talking about operations up there, right? It's just like tracking space objects, for instance, is it very important, not just from a national security perspective, but even from a commercial perspective. If you've got a very expensive telecommunications satellite, that's up there that cost billions of dollars in R&D and to get it up there in orbit in prices that are not competitive to, to uh, SpaceX these days, right, in terms of ki uh, kilograms of rocket fuel. It's, it's a, it, you want to protect that asset and you want to understand what's happening up there in orbit. And when you have, in the most recent news was on Friday, we had uh, Intel Sat 33E that yeah. unfortunately broke apart into 20 pieces and they're now tracking that. Is it where, how is it going to affect orbits? That means like you mentioned, it's going to be difficult to operate in that particular orbit if there's or that there's an object there that could be uh, a risk factor, you know, in terms of life uh, uh, life of the vehicle and life of the satellite or spacecraft. So these are a lot of things to consider. Yeah. There's a lot of things to analyze, yeah. right? There's a lot of operations, and you're talking about, you know, some of our models are are calculating some of these calculations with our partners, our international partners. Uh, out there, like Millennial Software and Quasar Sat, you know some of the up-and-coming companies, along with uh, Turian Space, et cetera, some of our counterparts, um, and that data fusion of you know all this uh, of of what is happening there on the data level. And so, um, what we can do is we can uh, get some information historical, literally in seconds, yeah. right to the to the hands of the operators. You know, digital transformation has been a buzzword, it's kicked around. Yeah. Certainly, Gen AI creates a whole other transformational you know journey. Um, space is now a new frontier and, you know, the greenhouses and exploration can open up more value, but we're kind of in that, I won't say cost reduction mode, but efficiency side of it. You mentioned mm -hmm. space junk and stuff flying around. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to track that. So that's still data. What, how do you view the challenges around, okay, the data problem? Okay. You got silos. Mm -hmm. That's also a, a digital transformation challenge. How are you guys looking at that? And, and again, little things from how equipment's procured to deploy and manage, that's just baseline. Mm -hmm. Then there's the value proposition of working in space. So the question is, what's the outcomes that people are striving towards and what are the requirements to mm -hmm. get there? Sure. I think it's very similar to the healthcare industry and also when you talk about um, 
you know, uh, uh, SaaS businesses, right, with data. It's like a lot of people want to hold it very close to them, right? And they're thinking, oh, it's our proprietary, whatnot. But industries that we've known, like similarly with, like we talk about NVIDIA and the trillion dollar company that it is, CGI was very similar in that way. And they realized that the interoperability and gaming, re that right use case, really help open up the economy on that and re those opportunities and that investors and shareholders like to look for. And so yeah, um, when you're talking about that, People and companies are starting to realize that um, some of the sharing of, of, of the data makes you go a lot faster because the industry actually understands the industry is, is uh, partnered together in order to propel that economy forward. And so for us, we're catching at the right time, the right place. We've got, you know, great people on board. Uh, that uh, have worked together and built another AI company before and exited, uh, and, and star architects and, and cyber folks with uh, DOD experience on board. And we're right there, right at the, hopefully at the right time. That's what people tell us, and uh, we're right there. Being we're a young company, you guys have made great strides. You, before we came on, Carrie mentioned you guys are already have letters of support mm -hmm. uh, and being involved. We're seeing the trend to private public partnerships as a critical linchpin mm -hmm. for moving fast, but reliably mm -hmm. with trust and data becomes a heart of that. Take us through your mindset of how public-private partnerships should operate, how they're operating, where we are, what's the progress look like? Give us an update. Sure. Uh, private partner, uh, private-public partnerships are really critical um, in order, the space industry has always ran that way. I think uh, some of the questions I remember being on the NASA side uh, when I would, as a NASA data not, and people will ask me questions like how do, how do, uh, or especially media, you know, like how does NASA feel about SpaceX competing against it, like she reflects, NASA, SpaceX can't operate without NASA. Yeah. SpaceX can't operate without the Space Force, right? Or back then, the Air, U.S. Air Force before Space Force was made. It just, they can't do that. It, it, we're all, like, coordinated in making sure, you know, that safety is covered and exploration is covered and payloads are covered and propulsion. Very similarly on the data side, right? It, it is, like, that... The buying signals now and, and then word on the street is they're buying for capabilities. They're not buying for singular companies, as we know, mm -hmm. uh, to provide solutions. They are buying for capabilities. And the only way that you can get there is through partnerships. Yeah. Space is all about partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the other thing, Channel Space, it's hard to do a truck roll. I mean, I know people were talking the other day, overheard a conversation about, I have my cable modem installed and I had to set it up. I mean, it's hard to even set up. That's another one. It's like, okay, you're in space. You can't just... There's no, like, you got to automate this stuff. It's got to be sure. bulletproof. It cannot fail. Sure. This is a big problem with, with some of these, these use cases where generative AI has to be reliable. Yeah. And if you don't get the data right, uh -huh. right there's no room right. for hallucinations. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. So, right? I mean, this so, is yeah. a core problem. Yeah. How are you guys attacking that? Because I can see, you know, coming in and kind of cleaning up the data is one mm -hmm. step, but mm -hmm. then you got to get in and have impact. Obviously, we're tuning our models and our proprietary data sets. We're working with that. We're talking to our customers and our partners to make sure that it's producing that. Yeah. It is interesting. It's it's fun to kind of do some of that R&D as well because it's yeah. exciting to know. And as we build, um, and we haven't even talked about cybersecurity, right? So like um, the research on cyber and AI is so new right now. So, you know, we're also looking into that. Um, on our side to make sure that it's just like let me tell you the team is super excited yeah. and uh and we're here to we're here it's interesting because i talked to a lot of the generals the cybersecurity comes up all the time because they view this as critical infrastructure but it's a, it's a global it's not just for the u.s it's everyone's mm -hmm. competing up there mm -hmm. um and so it's a it's a delicate environment mm -hmm. it's you know and it it seems like there's a lot of space up there to move around but not not really there's congestion how are you guys attacking the market what's the vision uh, for the venture, are you coming in um, back office optimization? Are you looking at more of the front lines of space? What's the focus? For currently, right now, we're looking at the back office optimization because that's where the silos are, hmm. right? And that's where we can have the biggest impact there and uh, given the experience of the team as well. And we're starting from there as our initial, you know, we talk about going to market, yeah. or your initial is be to land it here. <laughs> we're landing, like we are landing and hitting it. So. Uh, we're landing there. And and with the amount of connectivity that's possible now in space, and this is with Starlink, obviously, that's built like paving, building the road, you know, infrastructure to do it, that edge computing is a possibility, right? And then, you know, digital twin, I mean, you talk about IoT, that, that 
that is like next level talk about yeah. speed right and 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 happening and th- but all that data comes down now that yeah, data yeah. comes down it still has to come down um for for the time being until it's it's up there and the folks who are uh, we're talking to the folks who are building so you're taking a progression approach you say yes. this, our entry strategy is to come in yeah let's get the data right and real and not just get the data right really understand what our our customers problems are really really deeply understand what and what's the reaction on their side when you come in and have these conversations? It's finally, oh, someone understands this, or they're like, thanks for showing up. Everybody's nodding their head. Interoperability, they get it, they understand it. Um, what is interesting is like, uh, nod, 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 head, nod, nod, head, and then the next thing is, and this, you know, yeah. and and and, the, and that's those are like, as you know, in venture, it's like fun signals of yeah. product market fit or early signals of product market fit. So. So those uh, those conversations are always happening regularly, and we're I'm I'm particular and very keen on making sure that yeah. that those insights from those conversations are really translated. It's to nice to see as a founder you know, this extensibility and headroom mm-hmm. beyond the entry strategy that you got a good path ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you look at that from a founder standpoint? You got to put the team together. You got to raise capital. Talk about the, your journey here because this is a I mean, it's an application, but it's it's yeah. it's it's got some of the same attributes sure. of what we see in the enterprise, right? You got to yeah. fix the silos, get mm-hmm. the data, you know, operating together. Yeah. Then you got to apply where's that value, and then the app sure. will open up, as you mentioned. I, I, clearly, this is the path of Gen AI. Wow, I solved the low hanging fruit problem. Yeah. Now, wow, I have five more opportunities. Sure. I mean, you almost could say yes to all of them, but you you can't say yes to yeah, everything. Right, right. Tell us through your journey how it's been. What are some of those opportunities? What are some of the challenges you face? Sure. I mean, you know, having this is my second AI company that we're building, um, having that experience, it really that focus and narrow, narrow like traction um, in the, in these initial stages is very critical and key. And having that experience, it's that, like you don't get bogged down by the distractions that are out there. And then the next thing is having a team yeah. that I trust and have worked with before that are amazing, um, really, really helps. And it just you know, I got a Marine on my team and he's just like, <laughs> let's roll. Even though he's got the energy, he's like, this is the, this is the funnest yeah. beginning. And, yeah. and it's so infectious on those days when you're, you're up until three o'clock in the morning, yeah, yeah, living, hard. living hard, uh, working actually, and, and sleeping in a bed that's not, <laughs> that's in a hotel room somewhere in the middle of nowhere, uh, doing that. It, it really, it's not middle of nowhere, but you know what I mean? It, it's like when you're on the road, it's really, you, it's really refreshing to have you hear that because I always tell entrepreneurs, you know, if you're coming into a big market, you got to come in on a very narrow yeah. seam and then sequence to the broader right. opportunity right. as you can, as you see it and can For sure. attain it. For sure. Having a lofty Land vision. Land and expand. Land and expand. Land and expand. And, and I think sometimes some of the folks in consulting are like, oh, you can go very near. I'm like, no. no. You yeah. just eat down your, your runway very quickly when you do that. So yeah. you don't. We're not focused. It. Not focused uh, and whatnot. But there there is some room where you're trying to figure out what that specific use case is. Sometimes it takes people 10 years you know, five years, at least 10 years in the healthcare. And so I've got, you know, uh, saw a good friend who, who had a really wonderful exit. And he's like, this took me 10 years to figure this out. Let me help speed you up a little bit nice. and whatnot. And I was like, oh, thank God, yeah. because uh, this is really helpful. And to this, your point about community, yeah, there's a big community here absolutely. that is, I mean, Huge. the commitment yeah. to the mission yeah. is a big part of the culture. Right. The space industry is still small, so people know each other or they've seen each other at the event. So when you when you see, oh, that's, yeah. the, that's the guy who's investing and whatnot, and that's the lady who's building that, you really, really understand, like, that community is so small, and it's just very helpful. Okay, so now let's zoom out for a second. Yeah. Let's kind of put our, 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 our future hat on. In a steady state, if, you can, if things unfold the way you hope they do mm-hmm. and things line up, mm-hmm. what's steady state look like for you and Planetary Systems AI? What does it look like? What's it operating? What's some of the outcomes? What are some of the things going on? There is no steady state. <laughs> <laughs> we just had dinner last night when folks are have a hundred million dollars ARR yeah, and yeah. what that is just like there is no the the the, the responsibilities yeah. and the um you know the um just the, the shareholders or investors will demand more as yeah. we go. 
and you're up for the challenge and you know that. Yeah. So it, it's like, I, I, I equate it similarly to being a mother and a parent or a yeah. parent, right? It's just like, there is no, <laughs> yeah. no user manual on it. It's one and, zone right, to the next. One okay, zone the next, to the next. next. It's just like, chaos I, I, you chaos. know, when you're early on, I'm like, I don't think I can handle a teenager talking to me 24 seven and all this other stuff when they're that little. But then as you grow, you realize like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Why do they yeah. say things yeah. as they grow? So um, yeah. that's my analogy. So chapters. So you have, chapters. it's evolutionary. Chapters. I mean, you, you, when you're in the grind in the sure. early days of being a parent, you're like, sure. oh, just, oh my God. And then you go, yeah. oh. Now you're in another grind, but you, yeah, that was easier. Exactly. Now it's like, and then high school, oh, sure. and new things pop up. Right. This and is space. It's always, it's always going to pop up. It's a challenge. And, uh, you know, Jensen Vong is yeah. very like, <laughs> candid about the steady states and those, and those green lights. All right, talk about what you guys are looking to do. What's your plan? I, mean, I got the entry strategy. Uh, what right. are you looking for in terms of talent? Um, what are some of the things you hope? to do if anyone was watching, mm -hmm. recruiting opportunities, customers, whatever, sure. to give the plug and share what your plans are. Sure, our plans is to grow. We're looking for customers. We're all, always looking for, you know, amazing uh, accredited investors who want to come on board, who love um, the technology, really get super geeky and excited about it, who just love space, right? And really what we're building because it is, it's not, not of it, not, some of it has been done before the middleware aspect of it. So you can build applications, whichever way we're building that right now. Right. Um, and you know, we're making the data computationally accessible and queryable and all that stuff. So we can build applications, other people can build applications. So that's very similar in the enterprise world. But, um, enterprise tech is space tech, by the way. Space yeah. tech, space yeah. data is enterprise yeah. data. Military tech. Military tech. All kind of blends same, together. All blends together. But what we're looking for is really people who really understand that. There are no passengers at Planetary Systems AI. We are all crew. So you're in it. You are not yeah. going to be there. Oh, let me see what's one. No, you're in it because yeah. we're really doing something that will one day maybe take us to Mars. Our algorithms are, are going to be in, or if not, they're out there in space, right, uh, and whatnot. So you have to be have the right stuff. Yeah. Right, as they say, yeah. Yeah. dare mighty things. Yeah, and the other thing too that comes up a lot, you hear this um, for people and, and on the on these progressive, really cool, challenging opportunities, they look up for smart people, to solve problems. Computer, Problem yeah. solving. Everything. Data scientists, <laughs> you know, software engineers, prompt engineers, love to talk to you, especially yeah. if you're a US based, we love to yeah. talk to you. Uh, you know, the military folks always talk about, you know, be ready for all contingencies yes. at all times yes. and be situationally aware, but keep your eye on the mission. Absolutely. It's just kind of like kind of a generalization, but it kind of does translate. So you got the mission. Yeah. What do you see as possible scenarios for a year from now? What might emerge and what do you hope to accomplish? Oh, military, politics. <laughs> <laughs> Getting in the way. No, no, assuming no, no, no. that those are well, okay. Those are uh, th assuming that those are okay. It's always um, a, a risk. It's a risk scenario yeah. uh, environment and in industry, right? Yeah. And you're always assessing what those risks are. And it is not. Um, it's not as lighthearted and as optimistic as you'd think. I've seen some really weathered people as well. But this this weathering is is the learnings from their experience is very very helpful. Uh, in there and the cautions, right? Somebody's out there worrying about it. Military's out there worrying about things that tough, solving some of the toughest problems out there yeah. with some of the toughest people, right? That's who we're working with. And that a collaboration, it's a system, which is why competition is kind of interesting. It is, but it isn't because you need that validation yeah. when you're talking about space systems, when you're talking about things, payloads that go up there, when you talk about rockets, you need companies to, to, uh, either validate or, you know, say, this is a problem. We need to take a look at that. So whatever you're building, even if it's similar, yeah. you're a yeah. system and ba a mission focus, mission purpose system that is say, we're saying this, you're saying this good, you know, checks and balances. I really like how you use the word systems because I've been saying on the cube for the past few years and now it's finally in the nomenclature. Every trend has a cliche, oh, design thinking, you know, yeah. but right now systems thinking is really a big deal yeah. because systems thinking is about things have cause and reaction, yes. consequences to changes. Yes. Isn't just be agile, and iterate. You can't iterate and not have an understanding of the mm -hmm. overall holistic system. So two questions, what does systems thinking mean to you? And two, when you're in systems thinking, there's trade-offs. Mm -hmm. 
and there's constant trends. You have to have some core pillars, those principles. Sure. What systems thinking and what are some of the trade-offs that you look at with, that rely around these some core principles? Right. I mean, systems thinking, I, I'm not the expert at that. I just feel like, you know, we're at yeah. the lab where we're doing the accelerator. <laughs> I feel like the, the, I've never, I, I've worked at two, uh, two uh, management consulting firms in, in my past and I've never seen things executed. You've seen so, good geometry diagrams yeah. on charts. I mean, like the schemas you know. are exquisite. I mean, I like, you know, hats off to yeah. to the major over there, uh, and whatnot. And, and it, it just like, it's so exquisite on that system thing. He is an expert. Yeah. I can't say I'm an expert. I'm a part of this, right? I've always been very mission focused or purpose focused on that. So the systems itself is is understanding that there's something bigger than you yeah. who was out there. And I think NASA really gives a good, you know, uh, it's inspiration for a lot of people in that, right? When it comes to space exploration and, and that training. And then the second part is in the pillar and what it is, is like, you have to execute to what it is. It, it, you, you, we can agree to disagree, right? A lot of it, yeah. I think 90% is going to be stakeholder management as we deal with um, digitalization and, you know, transformation and, you know, Apollo infrastructure yeah. into like data lake and, you know, cloud architecture is really new. Uh, and whatnot, but there's no better time yeah. than to be in space. Yeah, hundred percent. It's and worth if, investing. And if we need some good charts, we'll call BCG. They're pros at architecture slides. We could probably <laughs> find some Gen AI. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, BCG, but you know. All right. Better. So my final question for you, because I think this is fascinating, because you're at the heart of a lot, the nexus of culture change too. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, pu pu public private. It's been around for a while, but we see that as the formula. Now, AI is you're seeing a cultural change around, again, holistic thinking, around how to make things work, mm -hmm. but pragmatic, it can't fail. No. So you got to have reliability, trust, delegation, sure. lockdown. How do you see the culture changing, and what are some of the success signs you mm -hmm. see when you see culture in organizations and people? Because it's a team sport. Yeah. Space is a team sport, and so is AI. So as you get into these systems and get the data right and get into the back office, you're going to have an opportunity to enable change mm -hmm. and pull that through. How do you look at culture? I mean, the U.S. government is, it, you know, gets a lot of credit for um, the commercial space industry and getting more of the, especially small businesses, right, coming coming in to build in that. Part of it is um, for competitiveness. Uh, it's part of it's for national security, but also a part of it is actually to make sure that there aren't um, specific providers that have a lock hold you know, for on, on uh, bigger companies and whatnot, and uh, and continuing to do that, and you're seeing that kind of movement with AI currently right now with some of the cloud providers and some of the Gen AI players out there. But there's room for that, and so the signals coming from the government to lead in that perspective yeah. has been very helpful. So we just see lots of little small space companies starting to open up, uh, like ourselves as well, being in the space. And then the second, you know, what's a culture change in that with that. Is is the military um, and the and the space operators over there are really working with people who are from enterprise technology like we are from, right? And so they want the tools that we have. They're like, why can't we have a Slack that works like Slack? Why can't we have, you know, Databricks or whoever it is or AWS and and whatnot? And they see how quickly you know the tech industry is outpacing that. Uh, and then the third is also. Um, just talent acquisition yeah. too, right? And so there's there's something that came out recently how the DoD is looking for a reserve of commercial folks, you know, to be a part of yeah. part of that and and uh, and whatnot. So very interesting times culturally, and very interesting. Like I'm so glad we came in when we did, yeah. right? After a year and a half of of working on an investment thesis, so what should we be building and whatnot? Yeah. And I'm just like, I think the timing was right, and, yeah. and the timing is right. Well, so. congratulations. It's great yeah. to see some early success out of the gate. Good to see that product market fit mm -hmm. and see the headroom with the signals from the market. Uh, what's next for you? Funding looking good. Market looks yeah. great. What's the what's the outlook? Don, thank you so much. We're I, I don't want to say it on camera, but we're raising. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I, 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 no. No, yeah, that I don't want to have any SEC like regulate, yeah. regulatory issues and whatnot. Yeah, we're always looking for great investors yeah. and whatnot. Again, like we're looking for really great customers, um, satellite companies or um, some. Yeah. some well, first of all, you had me at the name Planetary Systems yeah. AI. Thank I you. I mean, great name. Yeah. And again, this is beyond just 
space mechanics. It's exploration. It is. And discovery. Yeah. You got to build out and then now discover. Right. If you look at our logo, you have the planet and then there's a line out there. We have a little orbiter. That's the AI. Our, AI, our work and is in your yeah. AI. Yeah. Be, and then hopefully this gets passed. embedded into all future missions. Okay. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Really John, thank it. you so much. Oh, thank it's you. It's been such a pleasure. Okay. We are here at the New York Stock. This is the Cube's East Coast office and facility. We are going to build our infrastructure in Silicon Valley and Boston and New York and add more regions of Cube regions around the country and the world. And again, get that data to you. We're opening it up. It's open source. And if you're into space, check out Planetary Systems AI. Really, really strong. It's like enterprise tech for space and, and all the coolness of it. And I think this is a, an area that's going to be another edge of the network. And of course, data is the key of it. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. Thanks for watching.